Hi, this is Todd, and today is Saturday, October 24th, and today we're going to talk about a rearing technique of uh, kind of a niche rearing technique for uh, a group of nymphalids, the area of the fritillaries. Uh, we're going to talk about how we can possibly in the fall uh, force their unfed first instars out of diapause, out of hibernation, to get them feeding in the fall. Uh, when I say unfed first instars, normally when a, a fritillary lays eggs, I'm kind of focusing here on this uh, squat tub, but when a spiraria lays eggs, um, it takes roughly 17 days, days for those eggs to hatch. And then the little unfed first instars in nature will hibernate without feeding. Most uh, fritillary females will lay five, six, seven, eight hundred eggs uh, because of the natural mortality of those larvae. But if you're raising um, spiraria in the lab, this technique will talk a little bit about how you can get those larvae to, uh, to get them out of diapause, we call it forcing spiaria to get them feeding in the fall. Okay, I've just taken the lid off of this uh, Rubbermaid squat tub, and what you see here is a uh, water pick uh, with a sprig of pansies in there. And um, I'm going to focus in on this. Okay, if you look down here on this uh, pansy leaf, there are two or three or four small larvae, unfed first instars of Spiraria sibili pugitensis. These larvae are small and they have been exposed uh, to this setup that I have here that I showed you earlier um, where I'm trying to force them out of diapause. What I have done by placing the larvae on the leaves is, um, when putting them in the squat tub, is try to convince them to start feeding when in nature they wouldn't. So in order to do that, what you do is obviously you put the uh, host plant in the water pick, put the water pick in a squat tub, you see that there's some humidity over here on the side, and you place it very close to a uh, uh, to a light source, and usually it takes almost up to 96 hours of this um, treatment to get them to finally start feeding, always keeping in mind that you want to stir the larvae up. Uh, in this setup here, these larvae uh, have been crawling around and have been re -diapausing. and I'm trying to get them to start feeding, but in nature, they don't. They simply want to go back to sleep, and the way to combat that is to continually stir them over 96 hours and they eventually start feeding. When they do, you'll notice, and uh, I'm going to have to use my other camera, I'm going to zoom in with my Digicam and then I'm going to take a better photo uh, with my Canon Rebel. If you take a look at some of these smaller caterpillars here, you can actually see some chew marks and some uh, dots uh, in the photograph that I just showed you, um, and those dots represent frass. And so once um, once your caterpillars begin feeding in this setup, uh, once the spiaria larva begins feeding, it has committed to continuing through to pupa and to adult. Because again, like I said, spiaria larvae uh, overwinters unfed first and start. Whether you overwinter them through a natural setting and they begin feeding, or whether you force them into feeding yet in the fall like it is now, either way, once they start feeding, they start feeding. And so what I do at that point is put them uh, in this little setup here the twin cut method, I've got some cuttings of uh, pansies in there and I've got larvae that are feeding um, and they are committed to go. So I will, you know, the second phase of feeding these larvae is in this setup. Uh, later on I've got some potted pansies over here and I will switch them over to that setup that you see there with the grass, in, you know, in a potted plant with a screen uh, extension on there. So anyway, this is just some thoughts on how to force spiaria um, out of diapause and into feeding in the fall. It's kind of a fun raising project in the fall. I by no means am a thought leader when it comes to some of these strategies of raising uh, fritillaries. Uh, there are many, many collectors who have gone before me who have taught these methodologies of how to overwinter their unfed first and star larvae, which are very sensitive to desiccation and mold, uh, how to force them out of diapause, and how to rear them in the fall on the pre-side or in the spring on the post-side. But they are a fun butterfly to raise and kind of complicated, but uh, if you've had some experience rearing and you want to uh, dive into the strategy. It could be a lot of fun. Thanks.